The winner of Liège, Baston Liège, Remco Evenepoel, returned today at Tour of Norway for a punchy uphill finish that he probably wasn't even favourite for because we have Ethan Hader here for Ineos Grenadiers. Tour of Norway starts six-stage dot pro race. Lovely race with Jay Vine here for GC, Tobias Johansson, the enemy, Remco, Pretty nice field as well as Kristoff and Pedersen and Hayter for the sprints. But today we had an uphill sprint. 2.5 Ks, 6.5% finish. Couldn't really tell who anyone was at the start of the stage because rain was predicted, but it actually got all right, the weather conditions at the back end of this stage. They weren't in winter kit, most of them at the end. Break went with Jens Reinders, who UAE are apparently interested in, but... I mean, Rune Herrholz is the Balwaza guy that I would be looking at uh, for a big world tour contract next year. They rode through or passed a waterfall, and you know extra pacing for Tobias Johansson and the man himself, Remco Evenepoel, here. Quick step, obviously, pacing for him. They were confident in him in this finish. Ineos didn't really pace as much. You see them at the back here with Gagenhart and Hater. Shout out Velon, by the way, for setting me up with this footage. 12 Ks to go. Remco, 12 Ks to go, pulls off for a P. Now, this is, I've never seen a pee break this late recently, especially from the guy. They've been riding all day for Remco. They they don't even know Ethan Vernon is pacing on the front. They don't even know that Remco's dropped back. I don't know if he said anything on the radio. Ineos were collecting at the back with 10.6 Ks to go. Break was at one minute, so they couldn't just stop either. And Remco has to come back, I think, with Henock on his wheel through the convoy. And he said afterwards, I just... I just had to pee. So I was wondering, you know, what was Remco drinking? Maybe too many chalky milks? I don't know. But he came back, 8.6 Ks to go. And this is where, you know, people have been criticizing Ethan Hayter. I've been one of them for his positioning. There's a rebuttal. Oh, well, it's not as easy as you think to move up. Well, yes, it's not as easy as probably most people think. But Remco literally, with 8.5 Ks to go, just goes straight through the middle and moves up in about... 30 seconds works his way up the peloton back up to his quick step teammates so yes th there's an energy cost to this like what remco is doing of course is not ideal having to do a, a p break with 12 k's to go but it's possible and it's advantageous particularly when you're a stage favorite and ethan hayter should be one of them you saw him on the great orm finish at tour of britain last year behind al philippe and wout van Aert. this is easier than that and doesn't have Wout Van Aert and Al Philippe. And now with the train set up at 5.8 Ks to go, it becomes increasingly harder to move up. Ineos are scattered all over the place, whereas you can see Quick Step in a line, Jumbo Visma in a line. Trek, I guess we're going for Pedersen, not sure. But yeah, this the rest of this video is basically going to be me both praising Avinapol for being quite strong in this finish and being confused at what Ineos are trying to do because they started pacing maybe for Gagenhart 3 Ks to go, GC with Luke Rowe, with Sheffield Rowe and Gagenhardt at the front, and then the climb start, and they disappear, and it's quick step going to the front, just keeping it locked down for the Avonapol stage win, which, I mean, yeah, they backed Avonapol the whole stage for the win, and then Ineos go to the front again in ones and twos, Sheffield on the right, marking Timo Rosen, who'd made a move, I think Nathan Van Hooydonk was going to have a dig for Jumbo Visma, Rosen, the Dutch national champion, but the pace has gone out again, so there were opportunities on this climb to move up, and here it's actually Gagenhardt Hart initiating. And now I was thinking, you can see Remco's having to respond to Gagan Hart. Uh, Gagan Hart, winner of the 2020 Giro. I guess him and Hinley careers have diverged since then. Hinley on fire, but Gagan Hart attacks. And now I was thinking, actually, this is smart. Ineos are trying to one to Avonapol because Avonapol has no teammates at all. This is the, the right way to do it. They got Sheffield, they got Gagan Hart, they got Platt. But, but Gagan Hart looks at Remco, sees he's on the wheel, sees that Hayden's not there, sees. Oh, Clap is in good position, and he keeps accelerating. Vine probably, I think, overextending a little bit to the left following Rosen, but admittedly putting himself in good position, and it bunches up again. So Plapp doesn't counter. No one else counters, and Gagenhart stops pacing. So I didn't really... I don't really know what the strategy was. Sheffield goes back to the front, and again, it fans out. It's not single file by any means. Avonapol's not even bothering to sit in the draft of anybody. He's looking for the next attack. You see the air fryer looking over, and Hater, he's behind Amador. He's so far back. So now is a good opportunity. Like, you can still move up at this point cost-free or to lower the energy cost when no one else is pulling to move up. And when people are responding like now, it's very difficult to move up when Remco moves, actually, and this is why it's so impressive what he did on this climb. He responds with Plap in the wheel, responding to Van Hooydonk. So riding 100% for the stage, not for GC, riding on the front here with uh, well under a kilometre to go when, again, 
I think it's Sheffield moves up on the right-hand side. Gagenhart's about to move up on the left-hand side with 500 left. Haters behind the Israel rider, two riders behind him. And this has been a problem before. You look at uh, Andalusia, of course, you'll remember stage one from 2020 when Hater on a 1,500-meter 5% climb, Movistar rolled him when they let out uh, Gonzalo Serrano and they just put him out of position and he couldn't come around. I think he was on Impey's wheel there and Serrano beat him, even though Hayter is better physiologically than Serrano. And a similar thing happens here, almost at the hands of Gagenhardt, who moves up with 500 metres left. He's kind of talking to Plapp, I think. He said, get on my wheel. So maybe I'm just reading it all wrong. Plapp gets squeezed there, unfortunately, by, I think, Hagen uh, and loses the wheel of Gagenhardt and goes back to it. But maybe they were just going for Plapp stage, Plapp GC. That would also make sense. Tobias Johansson. On the bottom right-hand side, incredibly bad position too. He gets boxed in by a quick-step domestique who's going backwards. I think it's Asgren at a rate of knots. Then has to come round the far right side on the Kaha guy's wheel as Hater is finally, this is with like 300 meters to go, appearing in shot. But he, this, he looks like he's doing it smooth, but there must be a big energy cost to this, moving up that much when everyone's starting their, up their big kick. Same with Johannesson having to go wide, whereas Avonipol takes the inside line, and I think Johannesson could have won this stage pretty easily. It pains me to say it as the enemy of the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast, but you see his snap over to Avonipol's wheel, and maybe Avonipol thought he had it won easily. You see when he looks back that he's like, oh, I better jump this back into another gear. And Johansson was coming at his wheel fast, but he made it close. But that's a lot of would it, shoulda, coulda. Even a pole closed down like three attacks, sat at the front for whole, the whole climb, and then was able to gap plap off the wheel. Thumbs up, big win, makes it look routine. Don't know what's going on with Hayter, but even a pole takes... An early GC lead of like 13 seconds on Plap, and we have a proper mountaintop finish coming in this Tour of Norway. As I said, six stages. There's some sprints for Christoph Pedersen, some punchy finishes, plus a proper mountaintop finish. Avonipol's obviously turned up in fantastic shape. Hopefully, others will be able to challenge him. Johansson looks pretty good, and I'll see you with the next recap of stage two tomorrow. Ciao.